Pig Rock Talk. Having a great time. Episode five. And what a special guest. This is the drummer episode. We dedicate this to drums because on this program, we have Alice Cooper's drummer, Glenn Sobel. And just like Pretty much almost every guest that we've had on so far, there were a couple challenges getting everything to work oh. <laughs> right before because we booked the guests, you know, days before, but then it's usually hours before the show where they first <laughs> sign on to Blab and go, how does this work? <laughs> <laughs> so we had to get Glenn's uh, uh, Wi-Fi connection working and uh, there it is. Some drummer fans out there. If you're a drummer fan, click on the hand claps. There you go. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. But, uh, and of course, if you're familiar with any of the format, um, I'm getting familiar with it as well. Uh, we'll have some big rock news because there is a lot of news in there. But I thought I would start the show up because it's a quick one with a, a little best song you never heard segment. What do you think about that, oh, Anna? Cool. Yeah, yes. sounds good. Awesome. You're going to have to start turning me on some best songs uh, that you never heard as well. Oh. What basically best song you never heard is, is I, I take a song that I feel is quite cool that maybe not the whole world has heard yet. And maybe you become a fan of it. Uh, this, because it's the drummer uh, episode, I figured this song basically just has drums and guitar. And this band calls themselves uh, Noise Rock. How about noise ah. rock duo? They're out of Brooklyn, New York. I thought they were the UK, they were UK based, but uh, Brooklyn, New York. When I went and checked a little bit more out on them, and the band is called Sleigh Bells. Ah. So, <laughs> might sound a little bit contradictory. The song is infant infinity guitars, but there's a hell of a lot of drums on there too. <laughs> so why don't we check out Sleigh Bells and the best song you never heard on Big Rock Talk? We'll be right back with Glenn Sowell and. Uh, very cool episode. This is the drummer episode. First, Sleigh Bells. That was Sleigh Bell's Infinity Guitars. Uh, welcome back to Big Rock Talk. I'm sitting here with Anna Matson right now. And uh, pretty soon we're going to have a special guest come on the show. Uh, first, rock news. Obviously, the biggest thing that happened since we did our last show, the passing of Prince, which was, oh, yeah. uh, that was, that was show, yeah. pretty, pretty big, big thing for, for all types of music, not just rock yeah. and roll. But that's the thing that very not not enough people know what a rock and roller uh what a hard rocker prince was yeah and and instead of you know playing up and doing all the obvious songs and playing all the obvious uh uh hits that he had because he had so many of them yeah, i exactly. combed and tried to find a song on the internet that that maybe not a lot of you guys had heard and uh, just showed off some of his hard rock guitar skills. So maybe we could just, as a little tribute to Prince, because he was so friggin' amazing, we can play uh, a song that featured his guitar playing. And uh, shall we do that? Da Bang. Let's check this out first and give us a couple more times, uh, a couple more seconds to work out the. Uh, the technical stuff with, with Glenn before we have him on. But first, it was a little tribute to Prince because I thought he was such a, an amazing guitar player. Uh, this is The Bang. Oh. Check it out. Say, I don't mind. I'm a dancing, I'm a saint, I'm a do most anything. 
on gun trouble because he can be part of this next little segment of big rock news ah, because this yeah, is the drum know drum bring up. <laughs> i know you know why i'm gonna bring up i think do you really we have that going yeah, because yeah. We, for those of you that don't know we are broadcasting i'm broadcasting uh live from nashville tennessee and anna matz my co-host she is alive in Uppsala, sweden so we are an international bunch and our guest is coming literally from one floor up i'm, I'm a little jealous he, he's he's got a vip room floor uh, why, why he, he's he's on floor 23 i'm on floor 22 but there's that distinction yeah. from uh, vip for because you need a card to get into his ah. it's unbelievable. Ah. <laughs> so someone says now i have an echo on my voice really it shouldn't be it shouldn't be echoing at all you hear me all good yeah, um all right I like it. Pussy Control is my favorite lesser known Prince Jam. That is. And just the fact that he got away with that song title is great. Another great thing about Prince. So, like I said, on the rebroadcast, you'll be able to check out that whole entire song without any like glitches or pops or echoes or anything like that. But without further ado, Alice Cooper has called him the world's on stage, literally just one night ago. <laughs> The world's number one drummer. Drum roll, please. Would you welcome Glenn Sobel to the show? Big Rock Talk. Glenn, take it off, baby. Hey. <laughs> That's a lot to live up to. There he is. How I'm, you doing, Glenn? I'm, I'm good. I'm a part of some big news. I don't even know. What's the news? Well, you're. this is the drummer uh, episode. You're always part of big news. For those of you that are just tuning in, Glenn Sobel, drummer of the Alice Cooper Band, and so much more. Hey, Anna. Hi. How are you? <laughs> What's up? I heard it's cold there still. Oh, it's kind of okay. It's probably not as warm as in Nashville, but <laughs> Swedish uh, measurements, it's kind of warm. <laughs> it's nice here. It's nice. It's nice on this floor. <laughs> it, yeah, the VIP floor. Yeah. Huh? I'm one floor down. Yeah. It's really hot in my room right now. But as you can see, we almost have identical rooms. So. It's, it's about the same. No, no, no. Mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a flashy card. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Yeah. yeah. But thanks for coming on the show, Glenn. Uh, the reason why I want you. Thanks for having for this, me. 
The reason I want you for this big segment of Big Rock Talk News, it's the news that swept the nation of drummers, uh, swept the world of drummers. How do you feel about the Scorpions now using Mickey D as their touring drummer? Yeah, all that news, of course, yeah. Uh, well, you know, drummers got to work, and sometimes drummers need a break. I can't speak about exactly why James Kotag needs a break, but having been a drum sub myself on several occasions, I get it. And Mickey D is great. He's going to kill it on that gig. And I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's known James forever. They're bros. It's going to be all good. I'm sure James is going to come back at some point. I mean, what have you heard? Well, I haven't. That's what I'm trying to find out through the drum world. Because here's the difference between guitar players and drummers. Guitar players never talk to each other. We don't have <laughs> forums and lunches. I mean, yeah. me and me and Tommy, you know, me, Tommy, and Nita, we all hang together, which is kind of a rarity, I think, in in bands. In but, bands, but, yeah. But you know, as a community, guitar players don't necessarily hang with each other drummers quite the opposite you guys all are a pretty tight-knit group why do you think i'm going that's to true? A, we're in nashville today i'm going to a drum hang this evening later oh, really <laughs> so if anyone's watching the show from nashville and is a drummer can they all hang or do you have to be a certain 20 level 23 <laughs> yeah you like, gotta be a part of the the drum <laughs> mafia pretty much but um but no, it is it's true drums drummers hang out with each other a lot more don't they we do. We're really fraternal. We have these lunches. We have these get-togethers. Just last night, there was an event here in Nashville that was actually uh, an event memorializing a industry bigwig who left us too early, untimely passing. And there were drummers and drum industry people that flew in from all over the country. I couldn't believe who I saw there. And we just happened to have a night off. So it worked out perfect for me, but uh, everyone played. We all played a song in his honor. This was Joe Hibbs. He was a guy that I worked with at the drum company I for formerly endorsed. And uh, yeah, it was good to see the turnout. Drummers are cool like that. Awesome. Well, before I get too far away from this story of Mickey, Mickey D right. and uh, yeah, Mickey joining D, the Scorpions. Mickey D was going to do the Thin Lizzy gig for a minute there. Yeah, that's what Cy Haley just chatted in on the live oh, chat. Yeah. He put that in there. Oh, I should that's put my cool. glasses on so I can see that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's what these are for, man. Yeah. These are not just fashion. Yeah. I don't know they're fashion um, anyway. But. Yeah, so uh, he was going to do that, but now he's going to do the Scorps. And Scott Travis, our buddy Scott from Judas Priest, is going to step in on the Thin Lizzy thing. Wow, cool. Yeah. So there, you heard it for, is that is that a Big Rock Talk exclusive? No, no, that's news. That's been out there. All right. it, it, I'm, well, not, I'm not breaking any news there. What do we say? It's a big rock talk exclusive. And then you, well, know, you heard it here. first. <laughs> this is, I actually got the fan reaction from the Scorpions. Cause you know, Scorpions are from Germany yeah. and I, I got, I was able to catch some exclusive footage, uh, footage when they announced the, uh, that Mickey D was going to be the drummer for the Scorpions. Let's see if I can pull that up right now. And you guys can see this, um, out there. It was insane. <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. Apparently they they went nuts. <laughs> yeah. Who knew Mickey D was was that big? I, I really didn't. And this is this is the best one. I mean, literally This is from a soccer game. <laughs> I, I was told that it was this was the there it is. This is the announcement of the Germans. For Mickey D joining the Scorpions. There it is. So, if anybody. <laughs> All right, so if anyone wants to see the full entire reaction, there, there's the link right there. Yeah. That looked like yeah. a soccer riot about to happen. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, football. So, uh, top of the news uh, besides Mickey D. Uh, Alice Cooper just started his tour. How do you how are you feeling about this new 2016 tour? Because you're behind there watching us and playing with us and seeing how it looks. One show under our belts. I think as far as first shows go, that was for a first show. That was great. You start a tour, 
you know, you're still working out the bugs, the kinks. We had a short rehearsal. They trust us to put a whole production together in a matter of days. I mean, what did we have? Three or four days to put together I, a new as show. As far as first shows go, I think that was one of the smoothest Alice Cooper first shows that you've ever seen. Yeah. And I just agree. So fans, just so fans know, I, I counted up the set list. Over half the set is all song, all new songs of a 22. Oh, yeah, over of a 22 song set list, there are 12 songs that we have not played live. Before. Okay. Yeah, all or right. Not not not, not 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 ever played live, but haven't played in the last few in years. While. In so a while. There's some surprises and uh yeah. And and we're going to keep tweaking it. We're always about making the show better, but that was a good first show. We got show this number a, 2 tomorrow night. Show number 2 in Nashville, you're right. But but right the here. thing is you have a surprise on the kit because you have a new kit. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, new drums, new new rack. Uh, DW Drums. I'm playing Drum Workshop Drums. I officially endorse them now. Sorry, that's not an exclusive, but yeah, that would have been <laughs> nice to debut that information here. Yeah. But yeah, that was the first show with a new kit and a new rack by Gibraltar. Looks killer. There's already been at least one photo out there circulating, and yeah, there's more to come. It's a it's a gig where, as a drummer, I'm lucky. I get to do these kits where you make a statement. If I was playing with like you know Pat Benatar or Foreigner or something, I wouldn't be able to have a crazy huge kit. It would be the basics. I love right. those bands, but I wouldn't be able to do the kind of drum set that I do with Alice Cooper. All right, and your drum solo has a. Uh switched up a bit because we're actually doing a different song different song that brings yeah. up that yeah yeah maybe a little bit of halo for those of you out there uh -huh. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, people call that that what do they call that the uh holy grail of alice cooper songs sure yeah you know the real story about that that song glenn of how it all started he had never played it live and until I joined the band, I think it was in 96 or 97, uh, we were playing the Netherlands. And of all places, that song, Halo Flies, was number one in the Netherlands. What? So we had, really? we had one gig at Grass Pop, and we said, we have to learn it for that. We have to learn Halo Flies for that. And then, it, for some reason, it went over so well that we just kept it in the set and then it's become a staple. Wait a second, wait a second. Now I'm learning something. You're saying the Alice Cooper original group that recorded that never played that live. They never toured that live. That was the first time that was that was played live. He didn't and play it until the he, 90s. If Cy Haley is uh if Cy, Lee, if Cy Haley is there to they did. They played it on the uh. 1972. <laughs> Damn. I thought I had an exclusive. I, I was told by Brian Nelson how about that? That's a, that, that I was told by Brian Nelson, and and the thing is, he's he's unfortunately he's not so around. So Cy to, to is the me. official. He is the official source of all info, and if it comes from him, it's like solid. It's yeah. it's solid. It's rock yeah. solid information. By the way, those of you listening out there and reading, if you don't know who Cy Haley is, he's the leader of uh, Sick Things UK, Alice Cooper's biggest uh, Alice Cooper website, and he does know everything. So Thanks, there it is. Si. You just made Ryan look stupid. You just debunked me. It's <laughs> all right. I, I got debunked. All right. How about this? How about this? You, Glenn Sobel, were only the second touring drummer to dry to ride on the drum coaster. Oh, uh, right. That could be Not true. My that, coaster. Yeah, not my and, coaster, but well, you, uh, Mr. You, were, you were you were talking about you know you've done you've done fill in gigs before when we were talking about Mickey D filling in for James Kotek. Uh, you had a big fill in gig oh, yeah. on the last <laughs> Motley Crue tour. How many shows did you end up uh, playing for Tommy Lee? And what happened? How did that it whole was, work? It was five shows. It was a week's worth. Yeah, that was uh, the first day was a crazy day. Of course, uh, I got a call from their production manager in my hotel room. It was about 1230 in the afternoon. He said, I need to talk to you about something serious. Can you fill in for Tommy tonight? He has got a bad case of tendonitis with his wrist. And the first thing I said, I said, okay, who's messing with me? <laughs> I completely 
thought it was not, a joke. Not, not like it's Tommy okay. It's like yeah. who's messing yeah. with me. Well, Can you know some of those guys. You know some of the guys in Motley Crue's crew. They're kind of jokesters, practical jokers. So Absolutely. If I thought, if I went, yeah, man, I'm I'm in. There'd be a bunch of people in the background going, ah, I got you. We, you know, they would have been <laughs> laughing and no, but he was he was serious. And uh so I just went into that sub mode, I guess you'd call it, and I said, Okay, send me a runner, send me someone to pick me up from the hotel, get me to the venue, have Adam, that's their sound guy, have him make me a, a thumb drive, give me a thumb drive with the show so I could take it in one of the production offices, sit there with it for a few hours and make notes. I'm a nerd, I read music. <laughs> I did uh, marching band and orchestra in, in school, so I learned to read and I make these things called cheat sheets. You're not writing out every note, but you're making a general... Uh, roadmap of the song and I did that and uh, I had the music stand up on stage with a light over it because it's dark a lot probably the, the audience didn't even see that but yeah it was on about seven hours notice the first day and of course it helped that we were out on tour with them on and off for a while just hearing the show in the background yeah. it helps but to get up and play it with the bombs going off next year that's a different thing so I had to really focus on the uh the music many, stand and not get lost. How many lost. songs would you say that you had to learn like on the fly? For how how many song set was it? Well, you tell me. What do they have? That's probably I lost count. Twenty two or something. Yeah, yeah. It's over twenty. It must yeah, have been. yeah. Over twenty because the show with with the roller coaster, which I did not ride during the show, but we'll get to that. Um, with that though, their show was about an hour and fifty. So without that, shave off about ten minutes an hour and 40 worth of material you yeah. know well glenn i know that you're too proud to say it but but i'll say it because it's true and there's been some people saying on the live chat you saved that tour you saved that tour yeah. for us we saved that segment of the tour for us because if we were to have to cancel those shows being that it was a motley crew sort of final goodbye those towns wouldn't have had those no. shows and i would have like had to go to New York and hang out in a hotel for a week and just, you know, that would have been a bummer, right? <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that. And believe me, I know what was at stake. You got to think about not just Motley Crue, but then Alice wouldn't have had a show. And um, everybody from the concession stands, the merch people, the local crew, the union guys, they wouldn't work that night. However, of course. Basically, Glenn Sobel saved the world. That's what there, you're saying. There was, there was disappointed fans, and I totally get it. It was their last time ever to see Motley Crue, and they didn't have Tommy Lee behind the drums, and I totally get it. So I was there to do a job, and Tommy is a big influence of mine, which uh, that also helped. You know, you grow up hearing music, and so it helps when you have to go up and play it. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it's a thing where they had to make the best of a situation where he couldn't play, and fortunately uh, – I, I grew up being a, a music reading nerd guy that can sub a gig and uh, and big Tommy fan. I'm able to do a reasonable Tommy Lee impression on the drums. He's got his oh, own feel. It. People he don't give him credit well. for being a big influence to the rock drumming yeah. world. You're yeah. saying what, what Prince is to guitar, Tommy Lee might be to drum rooms. You could say, yeah, Prince doesn't get his due as a guitar player, right? Right. So that's not enough. Yeah. Not enough. But he's the thing is, stuff, but he it's, really it's is more about him being the celebrity of it. He's yeah, a great, a, he's a great guitar player, showman, but he could play. Yeah, yeah, and Tommy can too. I would, yeah. I would go so far to say, if there was no Tommy Lee, there may not be a Dave Grohl, oh, as yeah. far as an evolution. Yeah. You, you could know? say that about a lot of drummers. Sure, I mean, even some of the extreme metal guys came up as Motley Crue fans. So, you know, and in L.A. in the '80s. You know, when there were all these bands all of a sudden trying to get record deals because there was Quiet Riot and Motley Crue, they like opened the floodgates for all these other bands now that Quiet Riot had a number one hit and Motley Crue was huge. Every drummer was copying Tommy Lee's setup. They had two <laughs> bass drums, two rack toms, two floor toms, two crack, two of everything. And it was like... I told you this was the drummer episode. Yeah. God, man, you, dr you drummers out there, if there's any drummers out there, start giving Glenn some hand claps because he, <laughs> it, it, it's a cool thing that we're, we're actually talking as, as much about drums as we do. Uh, when you talk about Tommy Lee's setup, every year 
he tried to outdo himself with his his drum solos. <laughs> I think this last tour and the final way, way, way to go out, he invented this thing called the drum coaster. Talk about it. Well, and then the, let, me, let me show the some. Crucify. The Crucify. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's what he called it. The Crucify. Motherfucker. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I think I think motherfucker was a registered trademark and say, you know, for, for part of the Crucify. He got paid every time he said it. Yeah. <laughs> but well, um, the, Here's a funny here. Remember that that was a kind of a funny little pool that we had. How many times Tommy Lee would say, uh, fuck yeah. Or was it, was it Nikki that we had, we had pools Remember yeah. on, on the first round of the tour? We'd always be around 20 to 25 times somewhere in there. Uh, five <laughs> the, minutes. Period. It was basically a, a, a pool that they would have with the, with the crew and the Alice Cooper, uh, yeah. band and crew of, of how would count how many times, uh, Nikki Six and Tommy Lee would collectively say fuck in their individual speeches. And what did he get up to? I think it was well, always yeah, yeah. One, one of them individually would be like, you know, 20 to 25 times during their. <laughs> I'm not well, surprised. Nikki had his speech. He would talk about how the band got together. And then Tommy yeah. was on his coaster with the headset mic on talking to everybody. That's a big part it of the show. It was five bucks. It was five bucks to get into the pool. And then yeah. I, I did you ever win it? No, did you? No, no. I think Nita Strauss won it, though. Uh, I think she had inside information. I don't know. Well, she you know, know. Um, yeah, one of the days I was talking to Tommy backstage, you know, I, I had, it was in the middle of that week of subbing. I said, man, I just got one question. Can I get a ride on the drum coaster? And he said, oh, man, you got to try it. And yeah. so. Like, no, can I get a ride on the Crucifly? Right, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, one day, I think we were in Edmonton, in up in Canada. So during the day they hooked it up and uh, you know, drummers ask me all the time, what is that like? It's hard. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you the hardest part that you hardest, know what? here's the thing. I'm going to play video, the footage right? of it. I'm going to play the video of it and you talk about it while we're doing it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Play away. This is uh, Glenn Sobel on the Crucifly. Yeah, when you're going upside down, that that harness presses into your stomach. It like knocks the wind out of you. So you're like not able to breathe all this, and you still got to play and go off. It's crazy. <laughs> and uh, on so this, just... he, he's got his electronic drums, so you don't really hear any real drums. It's just the pads, and they weren't turned on. So yeah. you just hear cymbal. But playing upside down is weird. Everything feels farther away. And... How about this, Glenn? This is a Big Rock Talk exclusive where you're actually commenting on your ride on the Crucifly. Yeah. See, we did have a first. I, just want to I would have to practice to this to get used to it. I would definitely have to do a few run-throughs. It, it probably, I did the whole thing back and then forth. It probably goes upside down about six times. Yeah. This is probably the only footage you'll see of, of a drummer other than Tommy Lee. Yeah. Uh, touring drummer. Yeah on that thing yeah you're so right you're right yeah it's quite cool so in that sense big rock talk uh just has another exclusive well tommy couldn't wait to hear what <laughs> i thought about that and that was the first thing i said was how do you breathe you know when you start going when, it's not when you're totally upside down it's when you're halfway starting to be upside down that thing is just digging into your stomach and again, him not getting the credit that he deserves yeah. uh as a drummer just to be able to do that yeah He's the been doing is, it since I, since '87. Girls, girls, girls tour was the first time he went totally upside down. The thing I love about this show, the thing I really friggin' love about the show, is that our for, for one is that Yoran, our friend from the Netherlands, can edit it, so I can talk as long as I want. We can sort of edit it down later, but I'm gonna search for a video because we're talking about this because Tommy Lee wasn't the first person ever to have no. a. You know, he was not he the was. first guy to go upside down. Yeah. And I'm going to try and find this? that video. How, how oh, do dude. you know about this? Because I, you know what, Glenn, I started as a drummer as well. Yeah, did you know that? Oh, I, forgot. I, forgot. I, I used to have a five piece <laughs> slingerling kit. I used to have a five piece tiger striped slingerling kit. And uh, it, I wasn't that good though. I'll be really honest with you, but uh, uh, Glenn, talk a, just talk a little bit about, because I had one other thing, but I find this video, cause this is quite cool. Um, I want you to talk about your Wednesday night thing that you're currently doing. Cause those people that are watching the show out in Los Angeles, or if you plan on visiting Los Angeles, uh, Glenn has a cool jam that he's part of every Wednesday and talk a little bit about that. 
Yeah, well, the, the word jam can be misleading because you think of jams, it's like, oh, well, people just get called up to play. No, it's very hyper-organized. It's every Wednesday night in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. It's at a place called Lucky Strike. Yes, that is a bowling alley, but it's a very high-end bowling alley, and there's a really great stage and sound system. And we have a resident band, which I'm a part of when I'm in town. And we just started about seven weeks ago and so right now there's a sub for me of course but like the first night we did the the show our special guests were sebastian bach and we had oh. nuno betancourt from extreme and rihanna's band orianti came out uh last week the first week that i was away they did a full tribute to prince the place was jam-packed it's free to get in which is great uh and then actually just announced next wednesday is going to be jackson brown a special guest, which wow. I'm oh. sorry to say yeah. I won't be there to play with well, him, but it's going to be a great night nonetheless. Yeah. So that's the kind of things that happen at that at that jam is we get some some stellar guests. And I it's hard every week to keep it like that full on a list level. But like we had Phil X, who is the uh, newer guitar Guitars player, for Bon Jovi, Bon Jovi. Yeah. yeah, we had him a couple weeks ago and we had he, what, what what happens in the second set? of that night there's three sets the second set we have a guest curator and they can play whatever songs they want with whatever lineup of players they want oh. and mm -hmm. so phil x was our curator of that set nice and that i'm going to use you as, as a recruiter for big rock talk guests because it's <laughs> like you have in the, you've got the finger on the pulse of los angeles musicians <laughs> so lucky great. strike wednesday nights <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been a very fun thing. We have a new batch of songs that we learn every week. We'll start out and we'll play Sabotage by the BC Boys, but then we'll go into like Owner of a Lonely Heart by Yes, and then I Want It All by Queen. That would be like the first set. The resident band plays the first set. So I love learning songs and getting it right. And our keyboardist, musical director, Steve Ferlazzo, the guy gets all the exact sounds, man. Like we did Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel. He had the sample of that that wood flute at the beginning. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You think we'll be able to do our Alice Cooper band jam? Because uh, for those of I've you totally that, that have seen this on tour, we, uh, the Alice Cooper band, it's its Glenn and Tommy and myself and, and Chuck and Nita. We put together some songs and jam it from time to time while we're on tour on a night off. So we do have some nights off in LA I saw on the upcoming tour. I was, hoping do a jam one of them, I was hoping one of them was going to be a Wednesday. I'm already way ahead of you on that. Oh, well, hey, awesome. let me. I found that footage. Let's check out the original Crucify. I know what right? this is. Is this a, and this is a drummer named Buddy Rich for those of you keeping score at home. Uh, my favorite drummers, Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich from the old school, and then obviously Dave Grohl and Tommy Lee. Buddy's one of course. the masters from way and back. That's Glenn Sobel. Glenn Sobel, as Alice Cooper says, the number one drummer in the world. But this at one time, Buddy Rich, this was the guy. So well, and let's clarify out. that uh, number one in the world is a reader's poll. Actually, one of the strangest magazine. things I ever saw my father yeah. do, and he did several strange things. Um, That's Buddy's was daughter. the pilot yeah. for the I've Got a Secret show. Here it is. Where they had him <laughs> strapped so in a harness dangerous. on a platform <laughs> with the so kid all set up. And the secret was that he was going to play the drums upside down. There's a 70 people. <laughs> Up. Cause it looks like it's all about to fall apart. <laughs> Look at that. Are you yeah. it? Yeah. Look how fast it's going. There it is. So I, I put the whole How video. I just put the link there. How dangerous sketchy does that look? <laughs> yeah, it looks so much worse than the crucifier. <laughs> Tommy Lee's well, a wimp. The, all right, that's what we're gonna walk away with. This. He's such a safety uh, upside wimp. down. <laughs> upside down drumming has come a long way. <laughs> that's funny. Since, man. so but, Glenn, uh, yeah, cool you've video. got other stuff going on on this tour what's the best way for people to check you out uh because i know that you're doing clinics on this run as well what's the best way to get in touch with glenn sobel 
Well, there's just so many ways these days, right? We have social <laughs> media. It's a whole new world. Uh, well, if you're a Facebook type of person, it's facebook.com slash drummer Glenn, Glenn with one N. Uh, of course, the website, glensoble.com, that's an easy one with the email link. There's your Twitter, your Instagram, all that good stuff. You search my name, you'll find me. It's that easy. It's crazy how easy it is to find people these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. I can't thank you enough for talking about as much drums as we did. I usually... Yeah end a segment with our guest uh, by playing one of the songs from the band they're in. And I was going to play an old school, beautiful creatures song. Oh yeah. But then oh, I said, yeah. but then I go, but then I said, no, I said, no, I'm going to play one of Glenn's songs. Cause in his mind, this is a song. All right. I'm wondering, I have no idea what you're going to play. <laughs> what? Well, it's I, one of the links that you sent me because, uh, because, where, where I would like you know, normally play one of a Roxy 77 song or a Beast or Blanco song or a Tommy, Tommy, Tommy song. I felt I should play your drum solo from the Wacken video. Oh, yeah. It's, oh. You did great. And that's how we're going to go out. Again, uh, everybody out there, say hello to Glenn. Follow Glenn. And uh, we'll be back after this drum solo with part two of Big Rock Talk. But again, Glenn, thanks for coming on the show, dude. Thank you so much. This is Cheers. Thanks for having me. Good to see you in Sweden, Anna. And uh, good to you. see you on the uh, on the 22nd floor there, <laughs> Ryan. And, uh, I'm sure we'll see you tonight somewhere. <laughs> uh, you got something going on. You have a drummer hang. So maybe we'll I'll see you tomorrow on stage. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm going to definitely see you tomorrow on stage. Yeah, that I'll much. We're gonna have a sure. floor twenty-three party now. <laughs> yeah, but only some people can come. Only if you have the right key, the card key. You know these. So, so hey, uh, this is the drummer. This is the drummer edition of Big Rock Talk, and we've had Glenn Sobel on the show. This is Glenn Sobel doing what he does best. Corey Dallas man. Cooper, the world's number one drummer. Enjoy it. <laughs>
then Orianti goes on to kick butt. Yeah. So, hey, Glenn Sobel, how about that? That was great. <laughs> I love that solo. It's like every drum solo in a rock concert, though. I took a pee. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> and went and got my guitar. A little guitar board. A little hotel room guitar now. But thank you very much, Glenn Sobel, for being on the show. That's cool. You are you a drummer girl? I mean, I, I found over the years that sometimes girls, there's some girls that just like the drummer. They're drummer <laughs> girls. No, I think I've what? always been more guitar, but I love Glenn's drum solo and like we talked about Tommy Lee. I think with Tommy Lee, I was thinking because I went to see the show in LA with in Hollywood Bowl without the roller coaster and then Sweden Rock, and I was like, ah, oh, but never mind. I'm not that big a fan of drum solos. And then when I saw it in Stockholm, I was like, wow, that's really good. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, because it would be really hard to put that Crucify thing at the Hollywood Bowl with yeah. no ceiling <laughs> <laughs> next to impossible. <laughs> that is true. And, uh, I, you know, Anna, you're just basically a fan of music, yeah. fan of bands. And uh, I know your, your guy, he, he's a guitar player yeah. as well. But you're also a big fan of the darkness. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. So at one point, I'm going to have uh, you do Old School is the New School and have you uh, pick. I think next episode, you'll, you'll pick the song. Oh. Okay. Which should be that. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds awesome. <laughs> This is the second sort of half of our show. Uh, again, as always, I always like to say, okay, we, we're going to keep it tight. We're going to keep it about an hour, but <laughs> I have so much fun doing this show. And this is our first remote broadcast. I'm, I'm in Nashville and uh, um, Anna's in Sweden. Thank you guys very much for coming out uh, to the show and stick around for the live broadcast. We have the regular um we have the regular rebroadcast that, yeah. that Jorn will edit, and he's been doing a great job with that. But I thought because we didn't have an official second guest oh, yeah. that we do something special, all right? Because I actually found an old interview with the boss. And I'm not talking about Bruce Springsteen. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about my boss, <laughs> Alice Cooper. And what this sort of does with the show, it, it, it makes it so that I've basically had every member of the Alice Cooper <laughs> band, the current lineup on the show. And like Glenn said, we are in beta. We're still testing. We're still working through the kinks of the show, but they've all helped. Every show has gotten progressively smoother yeah. and they've helped us you know, come up with a format. So basically I'd like to introduce our next guest with one of his videos and uh, I'll play it because it's one of the songs that we added to the set just recently. So check it out and you're on Big Rock Talk and we still got a long way to go for the show. How about that for some foreshadowing? So enjoy this video and we'll be right back with our special guest interview. Roxy, Anna, Big Rock Talk.
that was the boss, uh, Alice Cooper. Long way to go. And guess what? That's we do got a long way to go. <laughs> you know, we just started the 2016 Alice Cooper tour. And for those of you that saw the show in Gulfport, Mississippi, uh, like Glenn Sobel was saying earlier in the show, Anna, it was the smoothest first show of an Alice Cooper That's tour that cool. I've ever been a part of. Yeah. And there are some uh, new surprises going out. I know there's uh, been a lot of talk about what songs are contained on the set list. Um, it's out there, obviously. Uh, my my main debunker of today, because uh, I say a lot of stuff sometimes, and I, I'm kind of like Alice, never let the truth get in the way of a really good story. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I've been debunked a couple times. All right, so the set, we do have 12 new songs in a 20 or 12 songs that we haven't played in previous tours uh, in the last couple of years, especially in this lineup uh, on this new show. But they have been played because obviously I thought, you know, I was, I, it, is it my body for one? We have uh, is it my body in the show? And that, that might have been played once or twice with uh, a band a couple of years ago. But most of the other stuff, like that song you just heard, Long Way to Go, we haven't done for... Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think we I've did. ever heard that one live. I did it in 2004 on the Eyes of Alice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I uh, went to my and first that, Alice show in 2007, so that makes sense that I haven't heard it live. Wendy Fenner, one of our live chat uh, BRT, Big Rock Talkers, she's talking about all the good ones. <laughs> Halo Flies, Guilty. Wow. So, what's up, Anna? How you feeling? feeling pretty good yeah i'm good okay How are you? i'm well i want to i want to play this uh this this archive video that i had i'm going to play i'm going to break it up in parts because that was alice cooper's song that we just played i i found this interview that i had done with him before i rejoined the band ah. in uh, 2012 they came to stockholm around 2011 on a tour and it was during this interview process I came up with them on stage and maybe just maybe the seed was planted to get back into the lineup oh, yeah. <laughs> um, after I came up and jammed with them at Gruna Lund for the encore. So it kind of holds a special place in my heart, this interview, uh, 67 films, Bobby and pair from 67 films. They filmed it and, and edited it. I basically found the footage and then said, you know what? It's too good not to be seen. And, uh, Wanted to show it for you guys today. So awesome. how about part one of the Alice Cooper interview that I did in 2011, you guys can check it out. And uh, of course, on the rebroadcast, we'll, we'll have it uh, in its entirety. But uh, for right now, check this one out. Let me get it there. And tell me what you think about my interview skills, if they've blossomed since <laughs> then. I... I... <laughs> I know my hair was a lot shorter. How about that? Check this out. This is Big Rock Talk. Thank you so much for watching and uh, spread the word. And thanks for spreading the word about us and following Anna. Anna, for some reason, you're, you're blocked out on my, I can only see your your eyes are getting blocked oh, out on there. It looks normal. I don't know. Mm. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Do I look okay, guys out there? Can you see all of me? I want you to see all of me. <laughs> Can you see all of me? <laughs> Let's see all of Alice Cooper in part one of this exclusive interview. Today on the program, we actually have a Hall of Famer. Uh, first of all, Alice, welcome to All Access. Thank you so much. A, re a true Hall of Famer. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm a Hall of Famer now. You know. Congrats, congrats, My congrats. With, with, yeah. <laughs> Buddy. I feel comfortable enough to call you by your real name, which is Alice. Alice. For all of those that want a major faux pas is don't say the V word, because honestly, it's just one of those things that it sets you off. It's, it's, and it's legally not Vince. Yeah. Yeah. Just Even my mom straight. is wrong when she calls me Vince. <laughs> Cheryl, your wife, she calls you Alice. All, yeah. time. all the kids yeah. call you. Everybody does. So, so if you, if you want to make a really good impression on Alice, Say Alice. Yeah, when you say Vince, when I'm walking through the mall and you go, hey, Vince. And I, I always stop and I go, if Elton John was here, would you go, hey, Reggie. So we're going to call this segment Hanging with Alice, or even better yet, if you're even more in the inside, which I've, I think I've, I might be in the inside. inside. Well, 
It's the coop, actually. The coop. So this is now hanging with the coop. And you know who gave me the name coop? Groucho Marx. Oh. Groucho Marx was his best friend was Gary Cooper. When Gary Cooper died, and then he met me, he says, "I can't call you Alice." He says, "You're coop. You're the coop." <laughs> From then Nickname. on, I was the coop. The coop. I wanted to get into that because you've had that chance to meet so many all uh, these guys, yeah, heroes. And, yeah, you know, and and honestly, I went out of my way to do that though. It was like you know, you meet the Beatles. Wow, how great is that? You yeah. know, uh, the Rolling Stones, Dylan, Elvis, Sinatra, <laughs> Ryan Roxy. Oh you yeah, know? yeah, I mean, it's just like, lump them right in there. I mean, Come on. <laughs> but then who? I wanted to meet like Jack Benny. And George Burns and Groucho and Fred Astaire. Did you and, hang with those you know, guys? Did you actually meet all those guys as well? They actually made me a friar. And that, now, a friar's club, you got to understand this, is the exclusive comedian's club in Hollywood that you have to be elected to. I mean, you, you know, we were talking about Bob Hope and, you know, Jerry Lewis and all this. I was the only that- rocker in the friar's club. And for some reason, they saw me as comedy. Because <laughs> they couldn't take me seriously. Uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just went out the window. You're no, a friar. I'm a friar. And, and, and I think, honestly, there was another group, though, in, in Hollywood, the, the Hollywood Vampires. The Hollywood Vampires. No, that, that, that was, see, if I would have known you then, you would have been a vampire. Well, I would have definitely tried yeah, to. Yeah, But But what was the... Uh, I've heard legendary stories about, if you don't know anything about the Hollywood Vampires, it was, uh, I can, let me see, who, can you name, let me see if I can name all the members. Okay. Um, there was Mickey Dolenz, yeah. was a member of the yeah. Hollywood Vampires. Uh, Harry Nielsen. Yeah, Harry Nielsen. Um, it was also Keith Moon. Keith Moon. Uh, Alice Cooper, of course. Yeah. And there was one more, or? Uh, Bernie Toppin. Okay. Uh, Elton John's co-writer. In, right. In uh, Bernie Richardson. was there, and uh, also... Well, I mean, there was a lot of guys that showed up every third night or every fourth night, but the guys that were there every night were those guys. That was the drinking club. And I think you became president. I was president. But how did you become president? Because I, had, cause I, because I put myself as that. Uh, I was I was the first you, one there. You didn't have a, a now a drinking no. contest with Keith Moon. No, well because, nobody could do that. Because how could you win that? No, one? no, nobody could do that. The, the only one that could win that is any Swedish girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably it's, true. It is true. I trust me. But the deal was, you'd go there and you'd drink at the Rainbow, and this is before Lemmy, by the way. Um, and then you would wait to see what Keith was going to wear. One night he'd be a French maid. Yeah. One night he'd be Hitler. One night he would be the Queen of England, you know. Every night was Halloween. Every night was a different costume. And we would sit there going, I can't wait to see what he's going to wear. He's Captain Hook tonight, you know. <laughs> and, but I mean, full out, though. I mean, yeah. not, he'd go and rent the costume and come in, Arr, you know. Did you guys dress up as well? No, no, no. We were just, just who you we are. just, because it wasn't our job to do what Keith did. Keith was the entertainment for the night. See, that, that's what I, I mean, that's what I really enjoy when I sit down and talk with the coop. It's like I'm hearing the stories not from some autobiography of somebody that's trying to protect oh, people. No, or this. I'm no. hearing them firsthand no. the way they actually happened. Well, we- so I'm going to cut it off there. That's part one. What do you think about that? It's cool. And it's cool in the way that he's talking about the Hollywood vampires as the drinking club before the Hollywood vampires became a band. That's what I thought was cool when I found this footage. I was like, oh, wow. We had talked about Hollywood vampires way before they had the band together. Yeah. And of course, you know, he's he's got a full uh, scheduled tour this year along with Alice. Alice is so he's like the hardest working business man in show business yeah, this year really. because I mean, him and Tommy as well. Tommy because Tommy's in the Hollywood vampires. Yeah. Maybe I'll be in the Hollywood vampires for one song at one show in Sweden. Oh, yeah. That's all. That's all I ask. Be fine. <laughs> so I'm going to pretty much have that uh, interview broken up in parts. So the next episode, we'll listen to part two because he gets into some fr- funny stories, more old school Hollywood stories. Awesome. Uh, and, and that's what I like about hanging with Coop. It, that conversation that we had is basically what it's like on the tour bus are you oh, cool. playing golf in the morning every single day? Because, you know, I'm not reading it in a book. I'm hearing it from the guy that lived yeah. it. And that's what's really quite cool. So the drummer edition is about ready to shut down for Big Rock Talk right now. I want to thank our special guest, Glenn Sobel, who came up and gave us some very enlightening uh, information. 
I want to congratulate Mickey D for joining in with the Scorps and uh, any other drummer talk? Again, our condol, you know, our our best thoughts with Prince, but you know, Prince is up there with everybody else that has passed in 2016, and they are yeah, forming some sort of super group. <laughs> Hell, imagine that super group that's yeah. happening. David Bowie on lead vocals, and Prince on guitar, and I mean, wow. So, what's you got planned for next week? We got, uh, we got. Nashville tomorrow, then we then we're just knee deep in these uh, in this touring. There's some people that have been commenting about the shirt. These are the new tour oh, T-shirts. Yeah, these, these what do you think about great. that? All right, you can go check them out. Uh, you know, RyanRoxy.com. Do you have AnnaMatson.com yet? No. <laughs> I think I think you need to start making your uh, Anna Matson shirts. Yeah. You are wearing a Bronco. Uh, endorsed shirt as well aren't you what did you say aren't you wearing a bisto blanco endorsed yeah, shirt it's isn't Jack's it wife's doing yeah. the forest queen nice and then i saw glenn was wearing a sick truth yeah. shirt and sick truth was the uh the uh manny from sick truth designed this logo I sent him over an idea of what i wanted for it so if you want to check out the shirt ryanroxy.com and you want to check out more about anna uh until she gets annamatson.com put up you can follow her on on facebook and everything else as well look i even have matching guitar picks oh those are also awesome. for, for this tour but this is a this is a grover allman guitar pick so i'll talk more about that soon on the social media you know i'm going oh, yeah. to well thank you very much for ordering the shirt you guys that's on the live chat that's cool um i thought that I would go out on the show with, a, because it's a drummer episode, a suggestion from Roxy 77 drummer and Boots On drummer, Anton okay. Shorbear, who I feel I'm going to have on the, I'd love to have on the show as well. Oh soon. yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> yeah, and then, and we can talk about all the things that are regarding Roxy 77, what's happening in the future, as well as his own band Boots On. Yeah. But he basically, we were voxering back and forth uh, this morning. And what happened was he goes, have you checked out this band, uh, 12 Foot Ninja? No. And, and I was like, huh, no, I haven't. And so he goes, I can't describe if the, their music and what it's like you just have to see it so then i go on and saw the video and it was like a a six minute video but it had a really long intro like an acting intro and i just was laughing enough at the intro and then the song came on and kicked and kicked ass and i just go man this is like something that's new school that people this is a great way to close out today's show so i didn't have a closer for the the show today and then Anton Shorebear came up and just helped with the song with 12 foot ninja. <laughs> 12 foot ninja. <laughs> yeah, we're going to so what so that's what we'll go out on. Uh thanks everybody for watching. Thank you everybody for hanging out with us. Um I'll see you on the rebroadcast. Anna, you are always welcome to come up on the rebroadcast yeah. when when we uh have it all edited up and looking nice cuz I'm online and usually talking just the way I am and we're just building this up. Big Rock Talk is on the road right now because we are on the road with Alice Cooper 2016. Thanks again for tuning in. Tell a friend. We're still building. We're still like, yeah. you know, building a fan base. And these are the type of shows that are special for us because we're kind of learning as uh, you are learning. There's a lot of cool things that we're able to put in the show that you you can't really do on just a standard half hour or a standard format no. show. Cool. Your suggestions too are always welcome. Um, anybody that's out there on the live chat, if you have suggestions for guests, uh, you have suggestions for uh, me, how not to look so hungover on the next episode. That's fine too. <laughs> I don't look that hungover, do I? No. Uh, I got I got a haircut before I left uh, left for tour, and I got it done. So <laughs> a big a big shout out to Wigwam in Stockholm. <laughs> and of course, Harrow Smith, the Harrow Smith girls were there as well this weekend um, when we were doing our pre-production. Oh, yeah. So that, that's the best pun for a hairdresser ever. Harrow Smith? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
So guys, we're going to cut out right now. This is Big Rock Talk that you have been experiencing. We'll see you sometime in the next week or hopefully somewhere out on the road. Unless the road happens to be Uppsala, Sweden, then you can just go hang out at Anna's house. Anna's <laughs> I'll play this. It's going to be a long one. It's got a it's got a, a long intro, like I said, but it is very very entertaining at the end, uh, and hopefully the show's entertained you as well. It's been fun. I never want to say goodbye, Anna. Damn it, that's the problem. <laughs> So maybe I might just hang for a couple minutes afterwards, but this is going to be the end of our show right now. Episode five, we've had Glenn Sobel on. We've had part one of the Alice Cooper interview. And most importantly, we've had all you guys watching. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks everyone for checking in. And we will see you on the next episode of Big Rock Talk. We go out with 12 Foot Ninja. Enjoy it. <laughs> hey, Cowan, have you been busy, have you? Have you been busy? Yes, mate, I have been busy. I've been as busy as a blowfly at a barbecue. Well, that is busy, isn't it? That's quite busy. What about you, mate? Have you been busy? Have you been busy, have you? I've been busier than a one-legged man in an asking competition. Ah! Jeez, uh, that is busy. It's quite busy. Shane, have you been busy, mate? Have you been busy, have you? Fuck, I know I've been busy. I've been busier than a dog too fucking dick. And what about you, Ryan? Have you been busy too? Yeah, mate, I've been busy. How busy have you been, pal? I've been busier than a cat. A fucking cat, mate, is that right? You haven't really been that busy. Been on holidays then, have you? Bit of relaxing time. Bit of watching the bloody grass grow. Watching the paint dry, have you? No, I've, I've been busier than a cat. Ooh. Mate, everyone knows cats aren't that busy. I've been busier than a cat bearing shit. Nah, nah, nah. You haven't been busy, mate. You haven't been bloody busy at all. On concrete. What? I have been busier than a cat bearing shit on concrete. Well, that is fucking busy then, isn't it? You have been quite busy then, haven't you? He's a busy boy. He's a busy little beaver. Influence. I maintain